So let's prolong the discussion on this one and speak with Adib Sani, who is a security analyst who's joined me in the studio. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Okay. So um, what was your initial reaction when you heard about this incident? Does it come as surprising to you? Uh, not at all. I understand it uh, happened uh, during a coronation exercise of some sort. Um, let us not forget that uh, this conflict in that area, Katanga, has persisted for, you know, ages. Decades. And uh, two years ago, there was similar crisis resulting in the death of, of a chief in that area. So mm -hmm. I expected that um, the security agencies would be much more proactive on this occasion, knowing full well there's an activity going to happen and there might be some persons who wouldn't want it to happen. So usually um, it's always got to do with intelligence failure and okay. our ability to be proactive so we put the necessary um, protocols in place so we don't have anything untoward happening. Unfortunately, mm. that hasn't been the case. And it's quite similar to um, what, what happened in, in, in the, I think, the north in Bimbla recently. Yeah. Uh, we expected that, you know, because the court has given its verdict and we now know who the legitimate chief of that area is, everything is fine. Of course, there would still be some deep resentments. Mm. You don't always have everybody joining the bandwagon yeah. all the time. You might have some others who would still be opposed to the court verdict. And you cannot conjecture when it comes to security. That is why the paramount chief uh, uh, of the Gonja traditional area even placed an embargo of some sort on the celebration of Damba in Bali to prevent yeah. anything uh, 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 bad happening. So uh, going forward, I think it's important that the security agencies are much more proactive. They gather the right intelligence and the intelligence is not just gathered, it's interpreted mm. in time. So uh, the various units within the security apparatus go to work with it before things spiral out of control. Okay, so still on this issue, the Minister for Chieftains and Religion on Wednesday said when he assumed office, he met some 350 chieftains to dispute. Mm -hmm. He has resolved some, and we have about um, 152 or more remaining. The discussion about chieftaincy dispute is one that goes and comes. And mm -hmm. in recent times, we're hearing a lot of it. Mm -hmm. How do you think we should be going about in resolving this phenomenon? Have we done much in, well, in well, the, the addressing issue is, it? He's resolved a lot of these uh, uh, chieftaincy disputes. I understand about 140. Yeah. But I would interest you to know that the numbers has actually even increased. Mm, he's resolved 142, and, uh, actually. Yes. So, so what it means is um, there's something we're not getting right. And okay. I'm saying this on the back of the fact that Chieftaincy disputes in Ghana is posing an existential security threat to us than even terrorism. You know, when mm. you consider the number of lives that are lost on annual basis because of chieftaincy disputes. And it's becoming an economic nightmare for a lot of Ghanaians. Because when you go to these hotspots, I have been to a number of these hotspots. Okay. I, I, I do appreciate how the, the effects it has on economic activities and exactly. people's freedom to move. So it's becoming a major issue. And like I indicated, we are not doing something right. And we... I think at this moment have to re-engineer our approach to these uh, issues. The problem is we have constricted it all to the militarized nature of ensuring security at these hotspots. Mm. Send more soldiers, send more police, make sure you impose a state of emergency. Yes, that, that was you, bringing me to my, my next question on how we have over the time dealt with it. Should it always be about, okay, let's send more security personnel or let's find other ways of amicably settling these issues. But you see, the problem is sending more security personnel is just like getting rid of the weeds on the farm by trimming the leaves. Okay. Of course, they regrow. So why don't we approach it from the root? Uh, exactly. Recently, I, when I did my uh, second MSc in Defense and International Politics at the Ghana Armed Forces College, my thesis was on human security as an emerging form of security governance in Africa. Case study Ghana. And mm. we have a human security uh, department within the national security apparatus okay. that was headed by then uh, general nunu mensa but it, since he was removed in 2012 somewhere around 2012 it has basically been defunct and our inability to approach these 
conflict situations from the human security perspective where the people there would be assured of certain basic services, okay. would be assured of portable drinking water, food, health, and other human security elements. We would have this persistent because when you look at it, human security is sustainable, mm. but putting more boots on the ground is not sustainable. It only ensures interim peace. And I I think it's time we rethink our approach to these conflict situations. So the, the recent Global Terrorism Index says that Ghana is among countries whose exposure to terror attacks have deteriorated over the time. Mm -hmm. And this takes us to the discussion about the fact that Ghana is currently sitting on a time bomb. If yes. we don't act fast, we might lose out before we realize we're losing out. Do you share in this, in this opinion? Absolutely. Positively. How bad is it? Um, it is extremely bad, especially taking into cognizance what is happening in Burkina Faso. Not l long ago, I did a terrorism course at Leiden University, Holland, and we assessed, you know, Ghana's preparedness. I've been on a number of uh, stakeholders meetings with, you know, these actors within the security sector in mm. Ghana, and they all raised concerns about the fact that um, what is happening in Burkina Faso it is it is it's quite worrying. Yeah, um, the terrorists attacks happening on daily basis in Burkina Faso is so worrying to the extent that the U.S. Forces Commander in Africa, General Michael Higgs, said that we seem to be losing the fight against terrorism in West Africa. Mm. It is happening all around us. Remember what happened at Grand Bassam, uh, Ivory Coast? It's happened in Mali, severally. The, the, the Sahel region is a hotbed for terrorist act activities. And groups such as Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, and Sardin and Sar Sharia, with their leaders such as Bel Mukhtar, Bel Mukhtar, have sworn, heaven and earth, to attack targets within West African, mm. uh, West Africa, yeah. and Ghana is inclusive. Yeah. So we need to be proactive, but so far our proactivity has been militarized, okay? Putting enough intelligence officers at the border crossings, which is good, but let us consider it from the hybridity perspective. That okay. is um, considering other Factors Chocolate that we hit that to all. exactly that we hit that we didn't co uh, consider that is providing certain services in these areas mm. because usually places where there's no government control where the citizens are frustrated are not happy are disenchanted with corruption and all that the terrorists step in and fill the vacuum and tell them look your governments don't like you we love you we, exactly. we are our people so yeah. they take advantage of local grievances to establish foothold, because when you take a look at what is happening in Burkina Faso, uh, many of these areas where the terrorists operate, interestingly, most of those areas are not inhabited by Muslims. Mm. You know, but mm. these terrorists take advantage of okay. the local grievance, of corruption, of uh, uh, politicians not accountable to the people, lack of water, lack of shelter, lack of sanitation to win souls. Mm. And, Talking and about the local, local grievance, so we woke up to the news some days ago about the declaration of Western Togoland as not part of the country <laughs> or a new country, let me say. Does this also go to affirm the fact that really people are frustrated and not really satisfied with security and governance in the country? And how would you suggest we go about dealing with this, this issue? Well, um, as funny as it might look, especially my good old man, <laughs> Papa <Abby. laughs> very stubborn old man, <laughs> um, it, it, it's, not, um, it, it's not funny at all. It mm. is serious, yeah. especially uh, when we consider what has happened in other countries, the English speakers in the southern part of Cameroon wanting their Republic of Ambazonia, the, mm. the, the, the Tuaregs and other Bedouin Arab tribes in northern Mali wanting their Republic of Azawad, Congo, Republic of Katanga, etc. Uh, we, we, if, it, if it's not well managed, okay. it spirals out of control. And looking at the geographical location of the place, it is, it is a slam dunk for arms traffickers. Mm. They easily would get arms into that area. And let us not forget that some of the issues they are raising is legitimate. Yeah. All right. And we have issues with identity crisis. So if the people 
are able to engage in massive propaganda brainwashing and paint the picture as if it is we against them. They don't care about us. It has the tendency of galvanizing support and who knows, God forbid, it might be something that we find hard to control. This is a major topic that I'm sure going we'll forward we have to we talk a lot more into. about. Thank, Thank you very much for joining you. us. Adib Sani is a security analyst. This is News at 10 on TV3. We're also live on DSTV channel 279. We're back shortly.